took off. Moving on, the recently concluded Global India AI Summit saw discussion among stakeholders on application of AI and developing use cases for India in areas of agriculture, education and healthcare. My colleague Ashmit Kumar caught up with the chief scientist at Dwadwani.ai, Alpan Rawal. He shared a glimpse of what the future looks like. Take a look. First, let's talk about India. You're deeply ingrained uh, in the Indian context. Yes. I'm keen on three areas, agriculture, healthcare, and education. Yes. Uh, give us a sense of what the AI use case application will look like uh, in context of these three spaces. Uh, we're doing, we're developing several use cases in agriculture, healthcare, and education uh, that are relevant not for the top 5% of Indians, but that are, that are relevant for the bottom 95%. And the opportunities are huge. I mean, LLMs is one area, and LLMs can really be used to empower on-the-ground workers, healthcare workers, agricultural workers, farmers. In the future, we can even be looking at digitization for India using a combination of speech models mm -hmm. and large language models. You know, if uh, imagine a scenario in the future where uh, uh, where someone in a village wants to open a bank account. Mm -hmm and doesn't need to fill in a form. Mm -hmm. doesn't, there doesn't need to be a bank teller typing information into a computer. All, all you need is a conversation between mm -hmm. the bank employee and the customer, and the conversation is automatically understood, transcribed, converted into a structured form, and converted into a, a bank account, essentially. Mm -hmm. right? So this is possible in the future. This is not yet possible today. Mm -hmm. Now, other than LLMs, there are lots of other um, uh, very interesting areas as well. So, for example, a project that we work on in maternal and child health, mm -hmm. one of the issues uh, in India is that uh, baby growth, after the baby returns from the hospital to their rural home setting, mm -hmm. baby growth isn't monitored necessarily in the most accurate way. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there are supply chain issues with deploying digital weighing scales uh, in rural areas, in remote areas, and mm -hmm. so on. So how do you make sure that babies are weighed accurately, sure. that their uh, body parameters are measured accurately and so on? So we've developed a computer vision-based AI app mm -hmm. that fits onto a basic smartphone of a frontline health worker like an ASHA worker sure. or an Anganwadi worker. And all this person has to do is to take a short video of the baby and the app tells you what the weight is. And we've got this down to very low errors sure. so that it's actually usable in the field. And in addition to that, it uh, facilitates automatic digitization of this data. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to write down in a register and then get it digitized later. Right. So these are the kinds of things we are doing. This is in health. In agriculture, we are using, again, we are using computer vision AI mm -hmm. to help solve the pest challenge in cotton farms. Just want to get a grasp uh, from you in terms of regulatory frameworks, in terms of evolution of these regulatory frameworks. How do we go about it? Uh, the question being asked is, we don't want to stifle inflation, uh, innovation. Stifle innovation yes. and at the same time we want to ensure that there's a safe, secure environment. Uh, is there a balancing act that needs to be done? Um, I would say we need to study um, regulation uh, that is rolled out in other countries, mm -hmm. but we can't mimic it. We need to respect that diversity of data that exists, you know, uh, inherently exists in our country when we build our regulatory frameworks. What is the need of the R? Do we proceed forward and rush with the DIA and hope for some kind of AI framework which is then consistent? Or do we then wait and pause for there to be a global consensus but that could mean that we operate in a vacuum? Yes. So, no. Do We do need to go forward. But I think if we have a sense that the regulations have to evolve in time as we learn, I think that would be the way to go. We can't just stop and say let's wait for everybody else to decide what to do and then we'll decide what to do. We have four.